Welcome to the first in a series of short documentaries on Cebus porcelains. Sculptures produced by the Cebus Studio in Trenton, New Jersey are among the absolute finest ever made. They're in collections and museums around the world from the Vatican in Rome to royal palaces. Collectors have marveled at the stunning porcelains created by Cebus that most certainly fire the imagination. The story begins with Boleslaw and Marja Cebus coming to the United States to paint murals commissioned by the Polish government for the 1939 World's Fair in New York. Soon after arriving, the couple who spoke no English met an aspiring art student from a Polish family named Marilyn Kozik. Marilyn became not only their translator, but a close friend, and she would ultimately become their protege and heiress to the Cebus studio. Upon completing the murals in the Polish pavilion for the World's Fair, the Cebuses toured the United States before returning home to Poland. It was while en route to Europe on board the Cunard White Star Line Georgic, they learned Germany had invaded Poland and they decided to return to the United States. Once back in New York, they leased space in the former Steinway Mansion in Astoria, where they set up a small studio and began producing sculptures made from a chalky plaster composition they termed Popka. These weren't fired, but were cold cast items that can still be found today. At first, the Popka items were sold on the streets of New York City to tourists. They were received well enough that Boleslaw began making plans to move to Trenton, New Jersey, the porcelain and pottery capital of the United States, to open a studio where he could produce fire china and porcelain products. In 1942, Boleslaw purchased property on Church Street in Trenton where he converted an old carriage house into an atelier that would become the Seba Studio. The original structure still stands today. The next 10 years would bring tremendous success for Boleslaw and Marja. They were so successful, they purchased property, previously part of the Drumthwacket Pine Estate in Princeton. On this acreage of rolling land with creeks, trees, and a small pond, Boleslaw and Marja built their home with a studio, a small amphitheater, and gardens where lavish parties and events were hosted. Unfortunately, the stress of managing the business and a sizable staff contributed to Boleslaw's failing health and debilitating depression, which led to his death in 1957. Boleslaw committed suicide at his home on 36 Greenhouse Drive in Princeton on Memorial Day, May 31st. One year later, on June 14, 1958, his still grieving widow, Marja, also decided to take her own life in the same home where her husband had done the same. The studio was left to Marilyn Kozak, who had been with the Cebuses from the beginning. She had married a co-worker, Joseph Charlton, who joined the studio in the 1950s, working to develop their sales department. Under the direction of the Charltons, Cebus would see itself growing to new grandeur and would be responsible for producing some of the most spectacular porcelain sculptures ever imagined. Having outgrown the location on Church Street, the decision was made to relocate to a larger facility in the early 1970s. The new location, one mile north at the corner of Oakland and Norman Avenue, would be home to the studio until it closed its operations in the early 2000s. With a focus on nature for sculptural content, a large garden area was built between the buildings where artists could study live specimens while in the process of sculpting their subjects. The next 20 some years would see Cebus reach its pinnacle and it all happened at 65 Norman Avenue. I hope you've enjoyed this video today and I invite you to watch the additional segments for Cebus porcelains and hope you enjoy the content of those as well. Thanks for watching.